Today I want to take a look at the SharePoint Online Admin Center and the setting for Allow Custom Scripting. This setting is a favorite of developers, and I like developers. Over here in the settings area, we have Custom Scripts. It's a setting that lets you do additional things with your site, including maybe JavaScript, custom actions, um, saving list as templates. There's a few different features that rely upon having the custom scripts turned on. A lot of third parties use this for custom development too. This setting will revert every 24 hours. It's a setting that's temporary. You can turn it on and Microsoft will turn it back to off, which means it's a setting we don't get to keep for very much. Changes to allow custom are rerun on that line 24 hours. Now, you can change it with PowerShell. You could run some PowerShell every 24 hours. Maybe you know how to do that. Maybe you've got a good place for hosting it. Or maybe you don't, and you're doing it by hand, coming to the admin center, running a PowerShell by hand, waiting for an end user to request. There's a lot of people doing this by hand. I think I have a third option, a better way of doing it. And wanted to put forward that idea. Some people might not like this video, um, but I think the developers will really like the video. So here we go. If you come into the admin center and you go ahead and set your site collection to blocked, that we are not allowing custom script. Okay, cool. We'll go ahead and confirm it and set to blocked. Now if we come in and set it to allow and confirm it, there's some stuff happening on the right. This is your network traffic. That second one right there, that is the allow payload. That is the allow JSON payload. It's a value of one. Oddly enough, the block setting is a value of two, not zero. Two equals blocked. And as we saw previously, one equals allowed. It's interesting to me because that's different than what we see in the PowerShell world. It just isn't common sense either. I mean, zero and one, true or false. Why are we using two? <laughs> No idea. Anyway, by watching the network traffic when we flip this setting, we can repeat the network traffic. So if we grab a hold of this guy right here and we look at the URL, it's SPO tenant, site with a GUID, we're patching, we've got an application JSON header for content type, and then we've got a JSON payload. If we imitate that in an MS flow, an MS flow that has tokens, an MS flow that's scheduled, an MS flow that runs as the same account that I am clicking the button. What I am doing clicking the button, MS flow can click the button for me. That's the theory. That's the concept. It will require no PowerShell modules, no scheduled tasks on a Windows VM, no clicking by hand, no running PowerShell by hand. Why don't we schedule a flow? So if we come over here and create a flow, and we'll say, allow custom script forever. Seems like a good name. That's a strong name. And we set it somewhere in the morning. Seven. Let's go bright and early, 0600. We'll go ahead and create a new scheduled flow. And we want this thing to do something super simple. We're going to do an HTTP, but not a get or a post. We're going to do a patch, kind of a little different verb. We have a few different actions we can choose from here. We have some graph stuff going, Outlook stuff, users, HTTP, generic. But this is the one I'm interested in, the SharePoint HTTP request. And on the verbs, nobody knows, nobody cares. We're all using get and post all the time. But lo and behold, we have patch. We're going to swing with patch. We're going to go with patch. And we're going to take this URL and we're going to break it down as the site first, entering a custom value, the relative URL after the domain name, example, API, whatever. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Headers. Yeah, we should do something here. Maybe it's paranoia on my part, but I don't really like complexity extra moving parts, increased risk of failure, likelihood, probability of failure. We'll go simple, application JSON. Say, okay, request, we're sending you some JSON. 
what's it going to be? Well, this is the payload to block it. We don't need to schedule that. That's the problem we're solving for. This is the payload to allow. That sounds kind of nice. We'll go with that one. So there's the payload to allow. Here's our allow custom script forever. And, um, you know, one day, meh. It's a little conservative. Let's go for every 12 hours. And that even, depending on the schedule, when we offset it, it'll expire. Yeah, it, it'll set its, its kind of time of day as to when it begins. You can even do some time zone stuff. I kind of like central time myself. So we'll go ahead and set that for every 12. Pretty cool. That's what time of day. So you know, on a given day, kind of cut it in half. It's going to apply it, apply it again and again, repeat the next day, or apply it twice. You, you can apply it twice every calendar day. Well, let's do the fun part. Let's run it and see what happens. Go ahead and execute a test. We're trying to imitate what clicking the button does. Test succeeded. That is pretty sweet stuff. Checking the outputs, we see a status code of 204 coming back. That it did receive our transaction. It took the deny with a setting of 1. It took the site collection GUID and it sent it to the admin center. Wow. All right. Cool. So checking on the site details itself. Our particular site has custom scripts allowed. Let's be the party crasher. Change that puppy over to blocked. We're going to block the custom scripts. Say no scripts for you. No scripts for you. All right, it's currently set to blocked, all right? Go, magic flow, go. Resubmit. Let this puppy run. Thinking about it. Grabs that authentication token. Makes a connection, runs the patch, gets back a 204. What happens over here? It says block. We refresh the whole screen. No maybes on this one. We refresh the whole screen. Now it says custom scripts allowed. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. You want to get the good number for a site? It's right up here. They don't put it in the middle. They put it in the top. If you want to find the good number for any site collection, I'll look it up first. Grab the GUID out of the toolbar at the top here, and you'll be able to include that on your flow. So if you want to do a whole bunch of these, because uh, I know that I do, it's not going to be a single site only, you can do a few things. You can make a SharePoint list and loop through it. You could, um, I don't know, put in like an array or a split, or there's a, there's a few different actions that, that we can work with on MS Flow for setting all this up. Um, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. And right now I've got hard coded one particular variable. Um, but we might want to do this for multiple site collections. In fact, I'm quite sure you're going to want to. And to that end, the demo should give you enough to be practical and not just the conceptual of a single. So we're going to call this site GUIDs. We're going to initialize it. We're going to append to it. And then down here, we're going to add, instead of the GUID number hard-coded, I want to get some dynamic content going. Append to the array variable. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Right in the middle of all that fun stuff. We got site goods. We're appending to it. We can do a each. Yep. Site goods. Our looping. Put our action block inside here. Current item. Single quote on both sides. That's how you make it loop. So yeah, if you want to do a bunch of these, knock yourself out. Go ahead and add more. You could also do this with a SharePoint list. This right here could be you know, get items off a of SharePoint list. You delegate out that list, put it on whatever site collection you've got, make that your input that you're reading, but 
essentially this is the array that you are looping and the current item is the GUID going in as the parameter. It's an easy call. This is a simple action, not a whole lot to it. Just to make sure the looping is doing as expected, we're going to go over here to custom scripts. We're going to block it. No scripts for you. No scripts for you. Turn this thing back off. So yeah, that's how we can do it. It's simple, it's supportable, and you can keep the custom script setting as long as you want. You don't have to go click a button every 24 hours. That's madness. We're not doing that. We're going to use automation to save ourselves time and to enable our community to use the feature as well. Test is running. This is, of course, the high-scaled looping version. You could do parsing a CSV. You could you know, split the string on a comma. You can do a SharePoint list, this array thing. I've, you can see the token. It says one out of one. There's the GUID number that it got for the first loop. Come back over here. It was blocked. We're going to reload it. Hard refresh the full page. Guarantee we're getting fresh data. And custom scripts are allowed. Yes. That's how you do it. So now we can allow the custom script setting. Not worry about the 24 hours in a way that's easy to support. Thanks for watching.